Uh, our first guest tonight is a two-time Emmy winner for her show, My Life on the D-List. She's a Grammy nominee for her CD, For Your Consideration. And now she takes aim at Oprah with her new autobiography called Official Book Club Selection. Please say hello to Kathy Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> not ta not talking to you. Well, this could be uncomfortable. Not talking to you. That's going to be a problem then. All right, look. I yeah. just wrote a best-selling book. Yes, yes. Congratulations. Which, ha which has been them. chosen for the Oprah Book Club. Is that right? Eh, maybe. And uh -huh. I actually referenced you in the book. And if you look in the index, you're yeah. referenced four times. Thank you. And yet, I feel like you don't give me good material for my book. I feel that you don't give me, like, we don't ever get into a good fight in public and that you uh -huh. kind of shun me when you see me off camera. That's not true. Uh, well, let me tell you something. You know who delivers? Who? A lady named Barbara Walters. <laughs> because when I go on that show, I get kicked under the table, I get banned, I can write about it. You give me nothing. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being so friendly. But let you me just charmer, tell you. You just got me back. As I've told you in the past. Yeah. I know better than to spend any time with you outside of the show. Because, because you, you fear that I will what? Tell everyone everything that I'm really up to in real life. Correct. Yeah. And now, that's what I don't want. What, is, what, is, what are you afraid that I'm going to expose? Well, if I said that, then there would be no point in fearing because everyone would know. But, like, for instance, if you we came over my house once. Yeah, okay, did we sleep together? Yes. We, well, we didn't. No. <laughs> And now you're afraid I'm going to tell people? No, I won't. Because I have a boundary that I would not cross. I don't want to tell people we slept together. That's private. <laughs> what were you saying? That I would be okay with. No, but okay. I don't know. I remember when you came over to my house, I was nervous because yeah. I thought you might start going through things and then talking about... Because what happens is every time... Well, your office in your house is an absolute pigsty. Yeah. And I will say that. He should be on that show, Hoarders. Have you seen Hoarders? <laughs> that would be a good show for you, Hoarders. I don't, what is that show? Well, it's a fantastic new show where they go into people's homes who hoard things in piles of it's like your office uh -huh, where there's just a, a path from the door to the and they figure out why psychologically you're ill and what is wrong with you yeah and i th we talked about that the third time we had sex. that's not <laughs> which, which i am not going to reveal because i have a boundary i don't remember any talking at all you time. had a rohypnol in your stomach <laughs> i took care of that the old-fashioned way i hoard them in my stomach it's yes. part of my thing now what can i count on you to put this book in the jimmy kimmel book club absolutely i mean there i have all kinds of crap in that room Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, office. no, no. I mean that you're supposed to like Oprah. You and Guillermo and the band. Uh -huh. You guys all get together and read my book and cry and talk oh, about yeah. your feelings. Yeah, we will do that. And try to figure out. We know. don't have a book club, though. Well, what the f am I doing on the show? <laughs> but, I'm I thought that. Are I'm, you? Are, you're looking. This You're is, like my mother. My mother, I wrote a book. My own mother looked up her own name in the index first. Of course. She wanted to see what I said about it. Her. Like you wouldn't do that. Right? Well, well, don't you do that? You go right to... That reminds me of the sixth time we slept together. And I thought, <laughs> I'm never going to talk about this. I'll be honest. Like, I read your book. Well, I read the four pages that I'm on. And you read the four pages your are Yes, on. thank you. for. Yes, I did read the four pages that I'm on. That I'm on. Because I, I was nervous when I saw that. You should I was be in, nervous. Because you have problems with everyone you encounter. So you're implying, yes, I don't get along with others. You're implying <laughs> that there are, who do you think in that book yeah. that uh, will not take it well? Who do you think oh. is going to have a hard time with the book? Steve Martin. No, he's not going to take it well. No, yeah. I do. I have a story in there, and it's so arbitrary because I'm sure he doesn't remember meeting me at all. And I do write about him being kind of a d And yet... <laughs> You know, what does he care? But yeah, he, he goes down pretty hard. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I actually did look through, and there are quite a few people that are, you're going to have a problem with. That. Yes. I mean, not that you don't already have a problem with those people, because... No, I have to... I hang out with my mom and my dogs. That's it. Yeah. Those are the only ones talking to me. And did your mom check the index and make sure everything was okay? Yeah, my mom read the index, and then she got bored and had a box of wine and went to bed. <laughs> I want to ask you about... I mean, it is a page-turner. You cannot put it down. This is something I learned today, and yeah. I, I don't know how I miss this, but I happened to be on vacation at the time, mm -hmm. and you... Is that a euphemism? No, no. You had okay. a very special date for the Teen Choice Awards. I've 
found love in my life, Jimmy. And that day... I have found a special man in my life. Was this gentleman, <laughs> Levi Johnston... <laughs> The, who is Sarah who, Palin's daughter's baby daddy. Right. Now, right? You took him out on a date. Okay, can I just say, for that alone, can I please just have my third Emmy right now? <laughs> just for that. Give it up. That'll be your fourth Emmy. Okay, I mean, I would like some sort of award just for that. How do you wind up uh, going on a date with Levi Johnston? You know, Jimmy, here's what you don't know about love. It will find you in the most unexpected ways. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like a May-December situation because Levi is 19 and I am 32. Let's just go with that. Uh -huh. The point is, it's, it's inappropriate. But I, um, I, the way I went out with him is the way that I go out on all my dates, which is I called him, asked him out, and told him what to wear. Really? Yes. You told him what to wear? I actually requested that he wear one of the suits that he wore to the GOP convention, and he did. And what did you guys do on this date? Well, we did a lot of math. Uh -huh. And we did a lot of reading and writing. Um, no, we actually we had a lot of vaginal sex. And, um, really? Which, which I am not going to talk about publicly, because I have a boundary. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, he was my date, and we did the red carpet, and he was a complete sport and totally got the joke. And it was, a, it was great getting the reactions from the journalists who would look at me and they'd say, So, Kathy, what do you think about Paul Abdul? Be, Who's that? With? That's his best son. What the? And I'd say, Yes, this is my uh, fiancé. Let's go with husband, Levi Johnston. Uh -huh. Dad. And um, I, I don't know if I should reveal this now, but there is a little bit of a baby bump. Is that right? Yeah. And I, I would not say that just to sell books at all. <laughs> I'm saying it because I believe it to be true. You do? Wow, that's congratulations. Now, I don't know if you know this, but um, I'm hoping, and this is just, you know, something I'm going to try because I think life is about trying. Mm -hmm. I um, am hoping that my book, Official Book Club Selection, will outsell the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you keep your fingers crossed. you got to get it in the motel. The, um... I went through the index, as you know, and mm -hmm. I, want, I pulled some names out. Okay. And I want to ask you about um, these people. Quickly, just tell me if you're talking to them or not. All right, Maybe but I think the question is more who's talking to me, because I'm talking to everybody. Gotcha, you're not right. Not that many people are talking to me. Brooke Shields. No. <laughs> Clay Aiken. No. Lance Bass. Yes! <laughs> Why is he a yes? And Clay Aiken's a no. <laughs> Well, because I have called Clay, Clay Gakin many times, in uh, jest, right. in jest, and Lance Bass has just, you know, been one of my gays as long as I've known him. Okay. And Clay tried to fool us for a while. Um, Chastity Bono. Uh, I would say maybe. Maybe? Yeah. Celine Dion. No. <laughs> Did you have a, any relationship with her that she would not A very superficial relationship that I, now I think I've ruined by implying that she had sex with her husband when she was nine. <laughs> Oh, it's a Canadian? It's a Canadian thing. It's a cultural... It's the exchange rate? Some... It's an exchange rate at Quebec. I see. It's a secession from the country. It's a different time. It's a different time. It's a boundary I will not cross. Gail King. I'm going to outsell the Bible. What? Gail King. No. Not talking to Gail King. Gail King, not talking to me. Oprah Winfrey. Not talking to me. Anderson Cooper. Talking to me. Okay. Paula Abdul. Not... Well, she may not be aware of who she's talking to. <laughs> Two more. Okay. Um, Paris Hilton. Yes. Talking to her. Dakota Fanning. No. <laughs> what problem could you possibly have with Dakota Fanning? I'm taking that little bitch down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... <laughs> When I got fired from the E! Channel for being a red co carpet correspondent, I got fired because when Dakota Fanning was nine years old, I thought it would be funny to start a rumor on the red carpet that she had just gone to rehab for drug and alcohol abuse <laughs> when she was a little nine-year-old. And it turned out you were what, right or wrong? <laughs> well, we'll see, but it turns out I was wrong, uh -huh. and apparently Team Fanning was upset about it. Oh, you don't want to mess with them. Yeah, they'll kill you. There, you don't think it's weird that there's a team fanning? I do think it's weird that okay. there's a team fanning. Thank but you. I can't say it doesn't Are you looking me. for your name again? In the book? I, no, I'm not looking for my name. I'm looking to hold up your book because it's called Official Book Club Selection, not endorsed by Oprah as far as we know. Kathy Griffin is with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Her 
the book is called Official Book Club Selection. And Kathy, um, you are hosting the Emmy Awards, an Emmy Awards show. The Schmemmies. Just to call them what they are. What are you exactly? The week, the week before the real Emmys, there's a show called the Creative Arts Emmys. And they're like the technical awards. And I lovingly call them the Schmemmies. Because they're like the fake Emmys. Anyway, two years ago, I won an Emmy. And during my speech, I made a joke and said, suck a d this award is my god now. Right. And... <laughs> Right. Yeah, people got mad. Sit there. Yeah. People got mad, and now they asked me to host that very same show. So really? my goal is to be so offensive that I shut it down entirely and they cease to exist. Well, yeah, I mean... It, <laughs> you have to set goals for yourself. Using that logic, then you'll next year be hosting the regular Emmy show if you offend them enough. Yes. Do you have anything planned? Um, yes. I, I might tell... Well, I, it's always good to tell a deity to suck it because people get very <laughs> upset about that. Yeah. Or it's good to um, offend Bill O'Reilly or Glenn Beck because then Glenn Beck has to go do some more of that heroin and go back to the Mormon church and be crazy. <laughs> um, so... I want to be. I have, you ever been, have you ever been O'Reilly's Pinhead of the Week? Me? Yeah. No. I have. I was on the O'Reilly Factor as Pinhead of the Week. Were you really? I was pretty excited. I would think you would be. It it's was funny. Great. Because I think you get excited about being Pinhead of the Week, and they yeah. probably get excited if you make fun of them at some. Well, they should. They're. <laughs> um, so, and and you know, I'm nominated for two Emmys this year, yes, and you, you know, are. I take that very very seriously. For so. Sure. My competition, I'm, I'm bitter. I'm supposed to be gracious and say it's an honor to be nominated. But in fact, f those f at Antiques Roadshow. And, it's you about know, time somebody took them down a notch. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. They're Who so else? high and mighty. Who? Well, the intervention. Okay. Which is, you know, on my show, you know, I perform in Iraq. I perform in a maximum security prison. On intervention, oh, here's a bucket of crack. Where's my Emmy? You know, screw them. So, um... Mm -hmm. They should go down. Uh, I think, what else is up? I don't know. I think dirty jobs. Oh, really? You're yeah. probably into that. Straight guys love that crap. <laughs> I have a job and I'm dirty. <laughs> Yawn. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bitter competitor. Well, you shouldn't be bitter because you've won, I think, the last two years in a row. So it would seem that with I, but that... But I want the girls. And you know that I think that my Emmys are more important than your children. Right. Like, yeah. I think your kids sound great. That's great. Yeah. But my Emmys are special. Uh, yeah, right. And uh, I call them... I've named them um, Emmy and Emily. And sometimes we have, um, we have tea parties. And they always tell me I'm pretty. Uh -huh. um, so I'm hoping we get a little brother this year, maybe Emil or something. Oh, that would so, be nice. That would yeah. be nice. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you're also, I know, you haven't given up acting. No, I'm, I also win because I'm a multifaceted performer. In fact, I just finished doing, if I can use the term, a film. Yes, you can. May it, I it use is the a term? Is it a film? It sounds pretty, yeah, I, yes, it's a film. Well, then, yes, you can use that. Okay, and this one, and this one, you know. This is a TV movie that you've just It's a TV done. film. And it's based on the life of a very famous person. Yeah. And, well, I don't it's, it's like my Malcolm X, if you will. It is, really? Yeah. Well, we have a clip here, and I've not seen you, so I'm very excited. Uh, here's uh, Kathy Griffin's uh, new movie. Take a look. Okay. Here, Kathy Griffin. She was a mother. I told you monsters to cram a Polly Pocket in those pie holes. Mommy's doing a satellite feed with Reaches. But, Mom, we're thirsty. Wah, wah, wah. Here, drink the tears of fame. Bottoms up. She was a wife. Awesome. Want to grab that light for us, dear? And she was a tabloid superstar. That's right. Look at these mama abs. And look at the tummy tuck scars. Ain't little <laughs> get you. Kathy Griffin is Kate Gosselin. You don't love the kids. Of course I love kids. Have you seen my girlfriend? <laughs> George Takei is John Gosselin. <laughs> Kate is enough. The Kate Gosselin story, right after an all new Mama MD, only on Lifetime, the place for Lady Drive. Wow, well, congratulations. Kathy Griffin, everybody. Official book club selection is in stores now. We'll be right back.